this is about the sixth month I've been working on my game Hexagod. And in that time, if I think about it, I look back and I think, why don't I have more done? Right? You, you wonder where the time went. And I think hindsight can be very helpful for you to figure out which things are working in the game, what things are actually fun, uh, what things uh, need more investment, and kind of which tech debt is not tolerable as you scale the game toward the finishing stage. Um, it's that 80-20 rule where the first 80% is fun, running fast, and, and driving forward, and the last 20% is really refining the systems down. And for me, I think the hardest thing I've been coming up against here is that I have a really good base. Hexagod is an incredibly fun game. Um, I've had a lot of feedback from from you here on YouTube or, or my audience over on Twitch or, or people in Discord. And um, heck, even some YouTubers have played it and they've enjoyed the game. But I want to make a good game. I, I want to make a good game. I want Hexagod to be as fun as possible, as enjoyable as possible. And one of the burdens of getting some feedback is people start to point out the cracks. And if you get enough feedback across the board on something, you can start to see the cracks that are truly there. Because sometimes feedback comes in the form of somebody who simply isn't gonna like your game, and that's okay. I don't wanna make a game that has mass wide appeal. If you do that, you end up making these huge AAA games that, what do they cost them, like $100 million, and they end up appealing to everybody, and they appeal to nobody. So I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to make a game for everybody, but I'm trying to make a game that people would enjoy. And part of making a hexagon, uh, he part of making hexagon, a hexagon game with cards and and kind of placing tiles and managing villagers and resources is going to attract a certain type of player. And once they start giving you feedback, and once you start hearing kind of what people are expecting, you start to see, oh, there's some things that I really need to address in the the core concepts and the core gameplay loop, or there's there's ideas that don't scale very well. And so when I hear just make the game good or or um, make a, a good game and, and it'll it'll sell itself, it's it's easy to say and really hard to do. And I'm not sure anybody said it's simple. I, maybe I'm just trying to clickbait you into watching this. But if you're here, hello, my name's Yermis. I was successful then. Um, but I think that's part of the problem I'm facing is. I know now that there's a few core systems in this game, a few core systems in Hexagod here that I really need to refine. I need to nail down what the fun is. Cause I think the 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 sticker value of this game, like it looks good, the the UI's minimalistic, like placing hexagons is fun, commanding your villagers, playing cards, all those things are really fun on their own. But to take those fun concepts and add a bunch of um, it doesn't have to be insane depth, but add some depth to them, add some interconnectiveness to the game. That's kind of hard. And especially as a novice designer, I'm not somebody who can sit down and make a whole game design document. In fact, I'm much more the opposite. I'll have a vibe of a game or an idea of a game that I've gotten from playing other games. And I'll kind of be like, ooh, there's, there's, there's a fun place to play here. And I spend a lot of my time exploring different avenues of things to build. And during that exploration phase, there's a ton of learning. There's a ton of growth. There's a ton of figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And what I think I'm running into now is there's a lot of sunk cost fallacy where I've put effort into these systems. Does that mean I should carry the system forward? Does that mean that the system is serving the gameplay. An easy example is the cards. I wanted to make a card-based game because I was taking some vibes from Stacklands. But boy, maybe that's not the right path forward. Heck, maybe the real-time elements of Hexagod are not the right path forward. Maybe it should be a turn-based game, and I should lean more into the strategy side of it. All of these questions are things that keep coming up. This isn't something I, I have... You know, I, I, I'm just coming to this realization after six months of, of what should I be doing? But there's these ideas and these thoughts and these pieces of feedback that become through lines. And I think 
if I were a more confident developer, if I had more experience, if I had more of a, a, a really solid vision for the end game and a really good faith in the fun being there, maybe I could drive forward and not have these questions happen. But, but, but maybe doubting is essential to what's being a human, not to get too deep, but like a lot of my life I've doubted if I've done the right thing, if quitting my job and become a full-time developer is the right thing, if, if my partner is the right person for me to live the rest of my life with, if I should buy a home, if I should stay where I live now, which friends do I want to hang out with? I, I, there's a lot of doubt in life. And so maybe it's, it's natural to be doubting the fun and what makes the game good. I think that's why I make YouTube content. I want to share my journey with you open and honestly, but I also want to get your feedback. I know a lot of you here are probably game developers yourself, and when Hexagod goes on sale, you might buy it to support me, or you might just watch these videos and enjoy it because you're not necessarily my target audience. But you are smart, and you do have an eye, and you more than anything can tell me when something's not fun. You might not have the solution, but I think that's why I like to do content creation from my perspective. I hope you find value in watching this journey and coming along with me and feeling inspired to sit down today and work on your game or spend a day doing design. But from my perspective, one of the big benefits is getting that feedback, understanding what are the cracks in the idea, especially as I scale toward the end. So in the next coming months, I am going to be in the February Next Fest. That is, uh, we have basically the rest of October, then November, December, January, and February. So I have about four and a half, five-ish months to realistically get Hexagod's demo into a state that's that's fully showing the demo. Um, I think that means in the next couple weeks here, I really need to nail down what are the core systems. And that feels like a weird thing to say, but again, I have core ideas, I have core concepts, I have core vibes, I have a lot of systems built out in the game, but now it is nailing down what those look like and then moving into the polishing phase, adding sound effects and animations and making the game feel really good to play. So um, I'm gonna be live over on Twitch after this. I'm changing up my streaming schedule to be Fridays only so I can really focus on game dev during the week. Fridays are gonna be hanging out, having a good time, celebrating Pizza Friday, uh, enjoying what the week was getting that feedback on design and talking about all things game development. So I'd love if you'd stop by. Go check out Hexagod. Uh, but until next time, I've been Aramis. This shit's hard. You're better at it than you think you are. Nobody knows what we're doing. Do I have any other sayings? I think that's it. Bye-bye.